Hello. Hello. <laughs> we on. Um, welcome and thanks for coming to this session. Yes, so this is what we're going to be looking at today. And I am Anna, and I'm a producer, engineer, and I work for Ableton as a certified trainer, and I also work for Native Instruments as product specialist, and of course I'm lecturing and module leading in Point Blank in London. So, who is a producer in this room who actively making tunes? Cool. Who uses Ableton Live? Amazing. So the star of this show is going to be this guy. So we're going to look at the simpler, mainly, and create. Let's see how many instruments we've got time for out of audio. So let's have a look at my session. So I've got some beats and some bass sequence. So let's just quickly check that. So this is just bass and drums, and we're going to sequence some pads, and we're going to build like a vocal instrument as well. So I also got these vocals here. I am sitting back against the door. I can hear your laugh resonate behind that door. So those vocals might not be like a final part of the arrangement, but we're going to use this random vocals to create the instruments out of them. So what I'm going to do first is just create a empty MIDI track and then pull the simpler onto it. There's two ways how to actually put audio into the simpler. I'll show the other one as well. And I'm just going to drag that vocal clip down into the simpler. So. First thing first is obviously the device area. The bottom is usually quite small, but in Simpler we can open this up and have the waveform um, just in a bigger resolution. So I'm just going to use the computer keyboard to trigger these vocals. So let's see if I found the right octave. I am sitting. Yep. I am sitting. I am sitting back against the door. So I'm already playing, playing it in different pitches. But where the problem is now, the higher the pitch, the shorter the sample becomes, and etc. So something cool and simpler is that we can warp inside there, so we can time, time stretch inside the device. So I'm just going to enable that, and then choose Complex Pro mode, because I'll be pitching the vocals, and that will help with the formant to maintain the clarity of the audio. So I'm just going to go in. And now if I play again, check this out. I am sitting back. Let's do a little harmony. I am sitting back again. I am sitting back against the door. I can hear your laugh resonate behind that door. So cool. We can already play these vocals with MIDI notes. So what I'm going to do, we're going to do a little like kind of granular synthesis business. So I'm going to just trim off some parts of the vocals, because I don't need all of this. And let me just sketch the back as well. And then I'm going to choose to crop the sample. It would be like nice to keep the whole thing in case I change my mind later, but it's actually really CPU heavy to have like long audio in the simpler. So it's a good practice to what we don't use, just get rid of it. So crop the sample. And I'm using the simpler now in classic mode because I can loop in there. And that's what I want to do. I don't want to play this as a one shot, so it's constant, continuously playing the whole sample. So I'm going to put on loop. Yep. And we're going to start adjusting the start point and then the length. Hello. Yeah, there we go. And now it's going to be looping this little area of the sample. So we already got a kind of little instrument going on. So let's just go and adjust and see what's the best part of the audio that we can sequence. 
Cool, let's stay there. Now, something is super important to be able to play this, um, you know, in a kind of correct way, is that we tune this and make sure when we hit the C on our keyboard or MIDI controller is actually triggering a C. Because right now, I have no idea what the exact pitch of this little slice is, so I might be triggering C when playing F, and then, you know, it might just doesn't sound that good. So I'm going to use the tuner, and just put that underneath, and now I will hit C, and then just see what this is actually triggering. Don't forget C for me. So we're not entirely there, so I'm just going to use transpose. That's better, and then detune a few cents. How jolly. There we go. So let's just put some effects on as well, because obviously the signal is quite dry still. So. Um, before we do that, let's actually just look at the control panel of the Simpler. So, what's cool about the Simpler? What is the Simpler, anyway, first? Um, I think lots of people assume it's a simple sampler, but it's actually not entirely, because in some cases, it's a bit more capable than the sampler, because we can, for example, slice audio in there that we can't do in the sampler. So, it's inherited also some subtractive synth elements as well. So it is a sampler with some subtractive synth elements to it. So down here, I've got the um, frequency um, the filter section. So I'm just going to trim off a little. I'm also going to change the filter type from clean to MS2, which is just some kind of old school circuit that they implemented like emulations of old gear into the simpler. Um, so that will allow me to add some saturation. So I'm just going to put the drive up. So it's just got a bit more spice and presence to it. And then maybe we could add a little bit of LFO and just modulate the filter. So let's just feed that in, like a lot. But that's too much, so pull it down a bit. Sync it to the, the beat resolution. Let's pull it to eight notes. Cool, so now it's at least got a bit of movement to the sound. Um, so next we're going to start adding processing, because sound design is really cool, and I think lots of people think that if you're using a, a little bit simpler synthesizer, like you're not specifically using serum, you're never going to be able to achieve a great sound. But what the reality is that serum has loads of built-in effects in it. So a really big part of sound design is actually the effect processing after the initial sound that we created. So yes, it's kind of like a general sound that we have now, but at least it's playing a pitch, and we used a random audio to create an instrument. Like, we don't have that vocal there anymore. We are so far away from it now. And yeah, we can just add some processing and then turn it into something a bit more meaningful. So the first effect I will apply is going to be the chorus. And I will switch this to ensemble mode. So I don't have two voices, delayed voices, but we have three. And then just make sure that we roll off the low end so we don't modulate the low end. And then a bit more amount, a bit more feedback, add some warmth, which is just a bit of filtering and um, additional saturation because saturation is never enough. Like, everything should be saturated, <laughs> pretty much. Um, 
So we basically widened the sound up a little bit now, and we made sure that we're not widening the low end by rolling off everything under 50 hertz. And then next, we're going to add my favorite, um, one of my favorite effects, which is echo. And I'm just going to drop that there. And let's check it. Nice. That sounds better now, for sure. So, time to sequence this instrument we created. Um, I won't be playing in notes because instead I will show you one of my favorite features of Avatar Live, which is audio to MIDI conversion. So I guess loads of you probably found loops on the internet before that you really like the melody of it, but you maybe you don't fancy using full loops or you didn't really like the sound of the instrument, but you really dig like the chords or the melody, and, but you didn't maybe know what notes were there because maybe music theory is not your strongest point. So not a problem, because it's going to be the savior for that. So I've got these um, chords here in an audio file. So let's check it out. Just going to solo there. Yes. So I'm not interested in this sound wouldn't fit the track, but I'm quite interested in the chords. So I'm just going to literally right click on the clip and then go and choose convert uh, harmony to a new MIDI track because they are chords. So we're looking for multiple pitches at the same time. So we don't choose melody conversion because that's just single notes, monophonic sounds rather than polyphonic. So I'm going to hit harmony conversion and now live created a new MIDI track and that will have the notes that it's extracted out from the audio. So let's have a little listen. So cool, there are a few wrong notes, there's always, but the beauty of working with MIDI, now we can just go in and edit it. We don't need to use everything, but it's a really close result to the original um, sequence. So I can just go in and actually just delete the audio now. So it just doesn't cluster the session. And I don't want to use all these notes. I just really want the first three notes. So we can just like super quickly edit this and just get those, get rid of them. Just go and adjust the loop length back to two bars. Move the notes a bit. Ah. is not really working with me today, <laughs> but I'm on air. There we go. There. And I also want to not have the gaps between the notes, so I'm just going to hit legato, and that extended the notes. And now we have this. So I want this to play in half time as well because it's quite a fast sequence. So I'm just going to hit the half time button in live. So now it's going to play like that. So cool. I'm just going to move this to my newly created instrument. Delete this track. And now we have this. So let's see how it fits the song. So let's just 
process this a little further, so we're going to sidechain the chords because they are quite like static notes and overpowering. So I'm going to just insert a compressor. This will just give us this, you know, usual pumping effect on the chords. So every time the kick drum hits, the chords will duck down a bit, which will introduce a little more movement to the sound. So compressor, we're going to open this up the sidechain section and we're going to make sure that we're applying peak compression so it reacts quickly to the transients of the kick. Choose the display view, enable the sidechain and then choose the drum rack. There we go. And then from the drum rack, we're going to choose the kick drum because we obviously don't want this to duck down every time there is a drum hit. So we'll go and choose the short kick. And now let's adjust this. That's solo. So we can check the incoming signal, which will be this, which is one of the kick layer. Let's check it with the drums. Cool. Okay, amazing. Now, last thing to look after is the low end of this instrument because it still got a little bit at the bottom, which is stopping the bass to come through properly. So we're going to use an EQ. And we're going to switch this to mid-side mode. So I'll be able to affect the sides of the mix on this track and the middle as well. So instead of stereo, we will go to MS. I will also have the little audition button on so we can like solo the band that I'm about to cut or boost. And we're going to work the middle first. So I'm just going to roll off everything below like 100 because I'm just not interested in that, that bit there. So this is what I'm rolling off this rumble, which is like not really audible, but it can build up very quickly on the individual tracks and it can really get in the way of your bass and then just not have this like really clear. So we're going to roll that off and then we're going to switch to the side of the mix and we're going to roll off even more there because we don't want stuff in the side, yeah? So we can have separation in the mix. So we can boost maybe the highs, like all the nice ear candy modulation, modulated sounds should be in the side and then the bass always in the middle, narrow, like coming for you properly. Nothing is in its way. So let's roll off a bit more. There we go. Let's just listen what I'm rolling off. That. So let's bring the bass in. Cool. So without the EQ, a minute. So the bass, I think, is coming through a little better. I'm not sure how much it's audible from the distant speakers, but I promise you, it's tested. It's coming through better. All right, we are done with this instrument, so let's move on and create something else out of these vocals. So next up, I will create a empty MIDI track again. And this time, I won't pull in the simpler. I will just focus on the empty MIDI track and then just literally drop the vocals down there, and that will automatically create a simpler device that holds the sample. So I'm going to just quickly roll off the very um, beginning of it. We're going to warp this again so it time stretched to our tempo. 
Complex Pro, there we go. Let's get the starting point right. I am, I am, I am. We can zoom in as well. Ah, okay. And now I'm gonna crop this off again. And what I'm really interested now is not really to go into this, you know, little section and either to trigger the vocals in its own um, at a full length. We're gonna go and slice this up. So if I hit slice, live will automatically create um, slices by the transient of the audio. So now I can use the keyboard or this keyboard here to trigger the slices. <laughs> Let's go down an octave. So, you know, that's all right, but um, I like to keep control, so I will create my own slices. So I'm just going to put this into manual mode, and then we're literally just going to go in and create a slice where we want. So that'll be the first one. And there'll be the second one. And I am, I am, I am, I am, I am sitting, 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 but sitting, I am, I am sitting back against the door. I can hear sitting by sitting, sitting okay. back against, sitting back against the door. That's I can hear you laugh back again, back against the door, back against the door. I can hear you against the door, against the door. Just kind of trying to I catch can hear four words. Door, 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 door. I can hear you laugh, resonate behind that door. I can hear you laugh, I can hear you laugh, resonate behind that door. Definitely, let's catch the resonate. It's a quite good word. Resonate, resonate behind that door. Behind that door. Behind that door. Let's get the door as well. Do, do, do. Okay, cool. So I've got my slices. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an empty MIDI track. And I will actually sequence in every single slice that I've created. Mm -mm. I, am, I am sitting back against the door. Cool. We're going to fill out I the am. clip. So we're going to hit legato again. So it's filled. And I've got notes here in. And what we know about the arpeggiator, that the arpeggiator likes to bounce in between the notes that we sequenced. So because all the slices are sequenced now, what I'm going to do is just bring in the arpeggiator. And um, let's play the clip. And then just adjust it and see what this is going to start doing. I sit back and do, I sit back, 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 I sit back and do, I I sit back, do, I am sit and sit back and back, sit, I do, back, do, I back, I and do, sit and sit back and I do, sit and sit back against the door, sit and back, sit and I am do, sit and back against the door. Bring in the music because maybe we could add some um, groove to it as well. There we go. So now we turned these vocal chops into like like the whole vocals actually into a playable instrument. So and we have full control over what note is playing, what word, what slice, and we could also go and maybe take this further and go back into the theater section. <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah, maybe this suits a little um, better. So we got two instruments out of the vocal line. So I've got here another um, simpler where I've got in a cowbell. So let's just check that out. Yeah, nothing interesting, really. But it's a cowbell in the simpler, and we are playing it as an instrument already. So, you know, random, just a sample with some kind of pitch information. So again, we're going to put the tuner on just to make sure that whatever we play is actually the note. So that's not a C for sure. So let's just quickly tune this in the control area. Let's just do this quickly, transpose it. Cool. Okay, close enough. It's never going to be like fully, um, fully on point, but it's definitely close enough for a C. So now it's tuned. We're going to bring in my other favorite device, which is Hybrid Reverb, that has also arrived with Live 11. Um, and what's really cool about it is there is a normal reverb in live, which is an algorithmical reverb, and there is a convolution reverb in live, which is convolution reverb, which means it contains um, impulse responses from the real life. So when there is the space that you're choosing to put your sound into, it was actually recorded that space, like the impulse response of that space um, in real life. So this reverb is combining the two of them together, algorithmical and convolution. So the first bit is the convolution bit. And yeah, like the presets are lovely. You can put your sound into the Barcelona um, church. But what I'm more interested in is the texture bit. Because there we can find like quite experimental um, presets, which are not really real places, but it's more suitable for sound design purposes. So. No sound, let's just, like, no uh, reverb, let's just check the sound again on its own. We go up a, an octave. Now with the reverb. So this is in the texture space, and let's just look at a couple of them. So let's check out bubbles, which is quite nice. So now we have this like bubbling sound after the sound, the initial sound, which is I think is pretty nice and quite unexpected to get this result from a reverb. Um, let's have a look at maybe chains. That's quite nice as well, and then cloud. It's quite nice to marbles. And so that's just the convolution side that I've just adjusted. Yeah, like these weird impulse responses. And then the convolution side can either feed into the algorithmical reverb if we choose to have it in serial, or it can be in parallel, like both of them together. The output of the sound goes equally to both or in a percentage that we choose in the blend section. Well, I will leave it on serial. And then for the algorithmical bit, I'm going to put on shimmer as well. So let me just change the convolution one to clouds. And shimmer is on the algorithmical side. And let's see the result. And then we can adjust the shimmer. And we can also pitch the shimmer. So now it's 12 semitones down. Just pull this back a bit. Oh, 
Okay, without it. Yeah, like what a silly meaningless sound, to be fair. And then with reverb. It's a bit better. So let's just EQ the reverb as well, because again, we don't want to affect the low end. So the hybrid reverb has got an EQ section, so we're just going to roll off up till about like two, three hundred hertz. Just so we don't get that bit there. And let's just add some notes in as well. Like maybe that. And all right, let's just play the whole track too. a nice little key sound from a cowbell and some reverb. We created a chopped up vocal instrument with arpeggiation and we created our main pad sound out of the vocals as well, just using samples and effects that comes with Ableton Live. No third party plugins, just, you just work with what you got. But it's just always really important that you really learn what you already have. Because I think we can get all very guilty at buying stuff, like getting more hardware, getting more software, plugins, and, and sharing that, and how cool is it? But do you really learn every single one of them to how to really use, or are you just getting it because they are cool? And you saw a tutorial where it sounded really cool. So I think it's just really important at first always just get down the basics and learn to work what you already have. And then once you have that, then obviously get the cool plugins, get the cool hardwares and everything else. Because at the end of the day, the software and all of this stuff is just tools. But what really matters is your creativity and your ideas that you can get out from quite basic stuff. So, Anyway, that's it from me. This is one snippet that I usually teach on one of the modules in London, um, in Point Blank, and student tends to like it. So I hope you guys found some useful information in this presentation. And if there are any questions, then this is the time to ask. Yes? Um, is there Um, there is actually something similar, which is called the Quick Sampler, which is only recently came out, very weirdly. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's also got a quite cool feature that you can record straight into the Quick Sampler, which you can't really do in the Simpler. Um, so yeah, that's quite similar, but then I think what, where logic kind of falls a bit shorter against live is the warping algorithm. That flex time is, I think, is way more complex and makes everything sound a bit more robotic. So obviously, if you use a quick sample in logic, you will be flexing the audio. But in live, if you use it simpler in live, then you have the advanced warp algorithms that comes with it. So what some people use live, 
just to warp their audio and you know, just get out the main bits of it live and then put stuff into Logic. Like, the more DAWs you know, the better for employability, for collaboration with other artists and getting hired and being proud of yourself that you know everything, basically. Okay. So, yeah. I think everybody needs a little bit of Ableton in their lives at some point, probably. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>